Hey guys, uh, my first encounter with a celebrity is when I was 16 years old and it was a divine appointment and I thought it'd be appropriate to share this and, and you'll see why in a moment, but um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Weird Al Yankovic. So he, you know, he did lots of parody songs like Michael Jackson, uh, Nirvana, Lady Gaga, many others. So he would take, you know, popular song in, in pop culture and then redo the words and make it funny. So, I mean, he became very popular. He won five Grammy Awards. Uh, he's got six platinum records, you know, so millions of albums. He's been in many movies. He's a bonafide, he's a celebrity. And so, this is a long time ago, but I was in Escanaba, Michigan, right next to where I grew up, in Gladstone, in the, in the Upper Peninsula, and I was at the State Fair. And I'm telling you, Jesus just changed my life. And I had a radical conversion at the Browns Revival, and I was, I was on fire for God. And as at the State Fair, we found out that Weird Al was playing a big show right there at the State Fair. So I was with my brother and some friends, and I'm like, we need to share the gospel with Weird Al. So we, we got together, we prayed, like, Lord, give us a divine appointment with Weird Al. Somehow let us meet him so we can pray for him or share the gospel with him. So we prayed. Soon after, my, my brother got a phone call, my brother John. And, uh, they, and it was a, a girl that my brother knew was a dancer for Weird Al. Like she just she was in his show, like one of the, like a back like one of the the dancers on stage or whatever. And so she said, "Hey, if you want to meet Weird Al, she's gonna be at this hotel after the show. And so you can come, you can meet him, maybe take a picture or sign an autograph. I think back then like autographs were bigger than pictures. So anyways, so we got really excited, and we got to the hotel, and we found out we were not the only people that heard that Weird Al was going to be at the hotel, because there's probably 30 people in the lobby waiting to hear, to, to uh, meet Weird Al. So we're there, we see all these people, and I look over to my right, there's this bar, there's Weird Al drinking with his buddies, with his roadies, and I was thinking, Lord, help us, how is this going to work? There's so many people here. So we pray. And then soon after, he stops drinking, he comes up from the bar, and he's just meeting people. You know, Weird Al, he's very tall, he's like, I don't know, he looked like he was seven feet tall. Not quite, but he was tall. And they call him Weird Al because he's weird. I mean, he's got curly hair, he's got this funny grin. And so he comes right up to us, and we shake his hand, we're like, Weird Al, it's so good to meet you. And we did something, we didn't ask for an autograph, we didn't ask for a picture, we just said, Weird Al, can we pray for you? And he, he kind of looked at us, he looked kind of shocked, and he's like, sure. And uh, he just kind of just like looked kind of confused, like, why are we praying for him? So I think we laid hands on him. I think I spoke in tongues. I can't remember. My brother started praying, Lord, I pray that you would encounter Weird Al. I pray for a supernatural encounter with Jesus, something like that. And I said, I he said, I bless you in Jesus' name. And then he looked at us kind of funny. He's like, thanks. And then he left. And so that was our divine appointment with the celebrity Weird Al. You know, I met Weird Al. I even prayed with Weird Al. But, you know, I can't say that I really know Weird Al. I may have said my name. I may have known his name. We had an introduction. I met him. But I can't say I really know him. You know, when it comes to our walk with God, salvation is just the introduction to knowing Jesus. And then we have this exciting, lifelong journey to get to know God. And I think many Christians, they live their entire lives looking back at when they first got saved. And they say, oh, if I could just go back when God felt so real, when everything was so fresh, when God felt so close. Well, my friend, the, the problem with that is the Bible says we, sh we should go to glory, to glory in our walk with Him. And there should be a progression in our walk with God. And we should, be, we should be looking forward because there's more of him to experience. And, you know, it takes a lifetime. It takes an eternity to know the depths of Jesus Christ. You know, Romans 11.33 says this. It says, oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths are beyond tracing out. My friend, listen closely today. There's more to Jesus than what you're experiencing Let's make it our goal in life to discover his heart and get to know him more. Again, salvation is just the introduction. It's meeting Jesus, but there's, I'm telling you, there's more than what you're currently experiencing. And this is what gets Christianity exciting. When you come to the place of complete surrender and your heart it just yearns and desires for more of him. So if it's okay, I'm going to pray for you. If you want, you can stretch out your hands toward the screen and let's pray. So Father, I thank you for everyone watching. 
I thank you that there's more to you than what we've experienced. I thank you, God, for salvation. But, God, I know there's so much more. I pray that you would take everyone watching to the depths of your heart, that we would truly know you, that we would love you, that we wouldn't be stuck just, just thinking about the past of a previous encounter with you. We wouldn't be stuck on one encounter, but we would truly be stay hungry for more of you, that we'd have multiple encounters with you, God, that we'd stay hungry the rest of our lives. So bless everyone watching in Jesus' name. Amen.